Hi everybody. Welcome to Universe View Odyssey channel. The Bohr-Einstein Debate 1, a modified double-slit thought experiment. Niels Bohr officially proposed the Copenhagen interpretation at the Como conference held on the shores of Lake Como, Italy in September 1927. And a month later, at the 5th Congress of the Solvay Conference Niels Bohr was succeeded in persuading physicists to accept the Copenhagen interpretation. He visited physicists one by one and persistently explained and convinced them of the logic of the Copenhagen interpretation. It was common for Bohr to hold on to physicists and say, let's just say one word, and persuade until dawn. However, some physicists such as Einstein and Schrödinger, who laid the foundations of quantum theory, strongly and persistently criticized quantum theory. The vanguard of the attack on quantum theory was Einstein. He insisted on incompleteness of quantum theory until his death. By the way, Einstein contributed to the birth of quantum mechanics by announcing the light quantum hypothesis in 1905. So why was Einstein so opposed to quantum mechanics? It is because Einstein could not accept the philosophical meaning of quantum theory. Specifically, it is because of the non-determinism, probability interpretation, and non-reality of quantum mechanics, and the non-locality that seems to conflict with the basic principle of special relativity. At the 5th Solvay Conference in 1927 and the 6th Solvay Conference in 1930, Einstein formally proposed a thought experiment pointing out the incompleteness of quantum mechanics, which seemed to get Bohr into trouble, but he did not succeed. And in 1935, Einstein published a paper titled, Can Quantum Mechanical Description of Physical Reality Be Considered Complete? Close corner bracket. Written with Podolsky and Rosen, in the 47th issue of the prestigious physics magazine Physical Review. This is the famous EPR argument that has sparked debate between Einstein's team and quantum scholars for half a century. This argument is called the EPR argument after the first letters of the names of co-presenter Einstein and his co-researchers and students Boris Podolsky and Nathan Rosen. This argument, which attacked the incompleteness of quantum mechanics, ironically contributed greatly to confirming quantum mechanics. From now on, we will look at the 50-year-long debate that Einstein, the genius of the century, had with Bohr over quantum theory in turn. Attacking the uncertainty principle through a modified double-slit thought experiment. After years of effort, Einstein has perfected a very sophisticated logic that points out the structural flaws in quantum mechanics. The direct target of the attack was the uncertainty principle. At the 5th Solvay Conference held in Brussels in 1927, Einstein presented the following modified double-slit thought experiment. Einstein's argument. Einstein tried to refute Bohr's assertion that not only can two complementary physical quantities not be simultaneously observed, but that these particles should not be considered to have these physical quantities as deterministic properties. For example, Einstein could not agree with Bohr's claim that in the case of the double-slit experiment, if one could see the interference pattern, one could not know the path of the particle, the complementary quantity. So Einstein attempted to fundamentally reverse Bohr's argument. Einstein's goal was to show through his thought experiment that it is possible to simultaneously observe two complementary physical quantities. He devised a very ingenious thought experiment. Schematic diagram of a modified double-slit thought experiment with the addition of a spring-loaded entry plate. It was drawn by Bohr in 1927 to solve a problem posed by Einstein. Einstein made elaborate modifications to the usual double-slit experimental setup. 
he was convinced that it was a device that could determine the path of all particles and also create interference patterns. He designed the entrance slit not to be fixed. He designed the entry slit plate to move freely without screwing it to the rest. Einstein claimed that he could do this experiment with individual particles, controlling only one particle to pass through the device. Make the inlet plate steady before sending one particle. Then send the particles and record where they land on the screen. Naturally, particles passing through the slits in the inlet plate do not always pass through the other two slits in the double slit plate. We only observe particles that reach the screen. If a particle was recorded in the field of observation, it must have, in Einstein's opinion, passed through one of the two slits. Therefore, if a particle initially enters parallel to the substrate of the entire device, it must be deflected up or down at the slit in the inlet plate. Thus, the particle's momentum must change and the inlet plate must be shocked and moved. If a particle passes through the upper slit, the inlet plate must be impacted downward. Here we observe whether the inlet plate moved up or down after the first particle passed through the entrance slit and was recorded on the screen. So, Einstein argued, this allows us to be sure which path the particle took. We have already measured the position on the screen that the particle has reached. The inlet plate is then placed back to the original position and the experiment is repeated with other particles. In this way, more and more particles will reach the screen, which, according to Einstein, will gradually form an interference fringe. At the same time we will have a list that tells which path every single particle has taken. Through this thought experiment, Einstein was confident that he had simply and concisely argued that the uncertainty principle, which states that, if the path of a particle is known, no interference pattern is formed, and if the path of a particle is not known, an interference pattern is created, is false. At first glance, this argument seems entirely reasonable and fitting. If this argument is correct, the uncertainty principle, the foundation of quantum mechanics, is proven to be erroneous, and furthermore, quantum mechanics and the Copenhagen interpretation built on that foundation are doomed to be discarded. Bohr's response After careful analysis of Einstein's argument, Bohr discovered a crucial fallacy. That's exactly what Einstein assumed in his thought experiment that he could make the spring-loaded entrance plate stay exactly at rest. However, this requires two states that quantum mechanics, specifically the uncertainty principle, does not allow. In other words, Einstein assumed that the inlet plate could be stationary, i.e., with zero velocity and at the same time in a precisely fixed position. This requires that the position uncertainty and momentum uncertainty be zero at the same time. But according to quantum mechanics, as Heisenberg's uncertainty principle claims, that's fundamentally impossible. A mistake Einstein made, and still very common today, is to overlook that the laws of quantum mechanics should apply to the inlet plate as well. The goal of Einstein's thought experiment is to infer that the particle is deflected up or down by seeing the swinging of the entrance plate. However, since the inlet plate cannot be made to be completely stationary, by the uncertainty principle, the inference of the refracted direction of the particle from the shaking of the inlet plate cannot be validated. Interestingly, in this thought experiment in which Einstein attacked uncertainty, Bohr proved that the principle of complementarity holds precisely. If we know exactly which path the particle takes, the interference pattern disappears completely. If we get sharp interference fringes, we can't say anything about the particle's path. Einstein had no choice but to accept Bohr's argument. Bohr won the debate convincingly, completely blocking Einstein's attack. However, Einstein, who was convinced of the incompleteness of quantum mechanics, did not completely surrender. From the moment he was sure to lose the first match, he prepared for the second fight. He further refined his own arguments and set about designing more complex and sophisticated thought experiments. Thanks for watching. 
You can read this story in Injury Time, injurytime.kr.